we're a craft development organisation based in Birmingham and we're committed to telling the story of making through um, and the benefits of making through exhibitions with project work with community groups. This project's feeding into the Made in the Middle exhibition, which is an open exhibition of work by people based in the, the Midlands, looking at the value of craft both economically and socially. A project that was in response to the Crafts Council's manifesto, and that was in response to the changes to the education system with, around the EBAC, proposed EBAC without any arts courses. The Crafts Council's manifesto is kind of a call to action for organisations and makers to find ways of bringing making skills and the importance of tacit knowledge and making skills into schools. This time we're developing Made in the Middle with the Herbert Art Gallery and Museum in Coventry. And I thought that was a really important thing for the students to be involved in. So I basically put in an application and uh, our school was selected. As well as learning craft skills, they're also going to learn about the craft sector, about jobs within the craft sector. They're beginning to learn about the link between craft skills and designer makers as sole traders through the work that we're doing with Haley. I would probably call myself a visual artist. I mainly work with textiles, but also some metal work. I also um, do um, theatre-based work, making costumes as well, so it's kind of a broad spectrum. Researching other artists, finding out about other craftspeople and how they got to where they got to. They're doing their Bronze Arts Award, which has a whole host of different components that fit really well with the kind of skills and learning that they're going to develop during this programme. The archives we've got here um, have been collected probably over the last hundred years from various uh, factories that we've been in. When we moved two years ago, whilst I was clearing out and turning out things to be thrown away, rather than throwing them away, I thought for posterity it was worth keeping them all. They're asking lots of questions. They've in their tour this morning of um, at Caches. They were asking questions about Caches competitors. They were asking questions about the products themselves. You do tend to think that, that children today just want to be interested in electronic gadgets and, and things like that. But no, they've been really, really interactive, and it's been great. Thank you, Caches. They've come to look around the exhibitions here at the Herbert. They've also come to meet the curators and they've come to look at the collection of um, both Cash's products and wider sort of textile, historical textile um, products and equipment and so on and hear about the history of the textile industry in the city. My favourite thing has been looking at all the ribbons. I like the animal exhibit. Because sometimes when you see them outside, you, like, you can't see the actual features, but in there you could like really get close up and you could see everything. Smell things and touch things and it really made a difference and made it more interesting. I really like spring. Everything's starting to bloom and it's really beautiful. Start of life. I could take certain shapes from the animals and try and use them in the product that I make doing patterns from nature and stuff like that um, might be a good idea. What I wanted for them to do in this session was to understand um, a few of the different ways that you can collect research and um, just to really experiment with doing that and to um, rather than just be sat in the classroom and listening I wanted them to get out and actually start doing something. Lots of wasps and bees <laughs> um, around the flowers, collecting nectar and pollen. So it's quite contrasting with some pretty next to some that are not so nice. I'm probably going to focus mine on the trees though because I just really like how they're formed. But I wanted to try and do something different and go for the stinging nettles. I took a picture of a branch with like, they're like cranberries or something. The brickwork because I thought that was nice. It wasn't like brand new brickwork, it was like kind of chipped and old. What I 
I want them to work on now is understanding how they can translate that research into something more personal to them. They were very excited when they saw Haley's own work and I think that really showed them what people can do and uh, the sorts of things that can be made. cutting out shapes off our fabric so that we can make um, like a bow and uh, some cuffs. We're going to use the sewing machines and learn some skills like how to make a buttonhole and how to sew on a button. But they were making bows and they were making little pleated cuffs. Some simple machine stitches how to sew something inside out and turn it out the right way so that you've got all the seams trapped inside. And then I taught them some little bits of hand sewing so that they could finish it off neatly. We like folded the paper over and ironed it down so it would stay. I really enjoyed it because I've never done these kind of things. I've only did like normal stitches and hand sewing. I think with the textiles there's a lot more steps and it's sort of a lot more precise so um, what I'm hoping with the two skill sessions is there's enough contrast between working with textiles and being quite precise and clean and neat and then they'll come onto the metal one where they can just be really experimental and grubby and bash things. <laughs> so yeah, I'm hoping that in that there's something that speaks to the way each of them move from something two-dimensional to something three-dimensional. Well, we've been making buttons and bracelets out of copper. I didn't really know they could do all these things with just like simple skills. Huge amount of noise and bashing and hammering and they all seem to be getting really stuck in. It's much faster to get a tangible result with metal. Part of the Arts Award that they're working towards, Part D, is uh, learning about how you can pass your skills on to other people. In this instance, we had them split into two groups. Each group learned different skills, and then they came back together to share those skills with others. The sharing bit of today was good because I learned how to use the drill, and I, I felt good about myself because I helped others to learn how to use the hammer. After it, you felt like quite proud because like, you feel like you've taught someone something. Obviously, to pass those skills on to others is a tremendously helpful thing to be doing, but also it's really good for their confidence. At the outset, there were some confident speakers and some less confident. We were only at week five, and I can't see any distinction between them anymore. Just listening to the quality of what they were delivering in their skill shares just I was bowled over by it they were really really tremendous showed real maturity and real focus and they really took it on board so yeah really proud of them. Well students are certainly enjoying the project and I think they're making links that they wouldn't necessarily have made outside of this project with thing, artifacts around their own homes that they see have been handmade they'll also have an appreciation now of the just the skill of craft the research images I've been asking them to collect in their home time, I'm going to get them to use Photoshop to turn that into a fabric design, so we'll have that digitally printed for them to work with. I'm really excited to see what they pull together and what they make when they sort of start exploring for themselves what they want to say. Today we've just been kind of pulling together everything that they've made and trying to get everything finished and polishing and um, assembling and um, just doing the last bits and bobs. It makes you feel like quite proud obviously because like you've just made something and it like actually looks good. It looks quite professional because of like the band of the nose. Like, it looks like it will be sold in like a shop. Yeah, on Saturday I'm going to talk to people and tell them how I made this and why I was inspired to do this design. They've made some beautiful things, really lovely finished pieces and I think they're 
hopefully feel really proud of what they've done. Yeah, I'm certainly proud of what they've achieved. Students are definitely excited to see how their, their goods are going to go down with the public. I think that's going to be the ultimate test. I'm really looking forward to taking Crafting Enterprise to Making Merry on Saturday. It's exceptionally good to have craft space here and it's a long-term partnership we have with them now which is introducing us to a, a huge range of local creative people, fantastic artists, craftspeople, makers from the region. We're particularly pleased to have young people here from Blue Coat School. They've been working with craft space and artists and they've created work and now they're here selling it, they're talking to the public. So they're opener always seems to be, with a real sense of pride, we made all of this. And they keep saying that, that we made everything here. All the hard work is going to be like sold today, so it feels good to finally sell it after all we've done. Because all of the students have engaged really well with the Arts Award. They learn the skills and they engage in the whole process. We can capture that and help them to reflect on what it is that they've learned. Yeah, I didn't really realise how many jobs there are to do with craft and it's really like made me think about other jobs. I thought about being like a designer like Hayley is. I want to like do art and design and design like furniture patterns, designing things that might be suitable <coughs> in a home. Going around and seeing how different artists do it sort of inspires me to see, see that I can do that sort of thing. What you can do in art and what you can sell and how much money. <laughs> I'm getting together with the school again um, early in the new year to present those awards, invite the family in and celebrate the achievement that they've, that they've reached today and through this project. The idea that you can be absolutely yourself, you don't have to be boxed in and say you want a particular career, you can just become yourself and express yourself and that's, that's what I want them to gain from the project.